It is an honor and a privilege to introduce Kenneth Chenault to you. President Ayun, thank you for your generous introduction. And thank you all for this great honor. I should probably begin by telling you that this is a dream come true. 35 years ago, as a young man living in this city, I watched John Havlicek, Jojo White, and Dave Cowens winning championships. And if I shut my eyes and let my imagination go, I could see myself on the parquet floor, home of the Boston Celtics. Now everyone in the building would be looking at me wearing my Knicks jersey. <laughs> waiting to see what I would do next. So this isn't exactly how I pictured it. But I have to tell you, this is even better. For one, while I think I used to have a pretty good jump shot, it was not exactly professional grade. But more importantly, and all kidding aside, this is better. Today is better. Because Northeastern, class of 2010, the ball is in your hands. That's where it should be. That's where it needs to be. The ball is in your hands, and soon, so too, will be a hard-earned, well-deserved, most respected diploma. For that, let me say congratulations, well done. And let me also say thank you for allowing me to be part of your special day. Thank you again to President Ayun, to the Board of Trustees, Administration, and Faculty. Thank you for the inspiration offered by today's other honorees, Vartan Gregorian and his example and commitment to education, culture, and the arts. And Victoria Reggie Kennedy, a great public servant, and I don't know if there is a name that means more to this city or the country than Kennedy. And I don't know if there is someone who carries herself with more grace than Vicki Kennedy. Thank you. And finally, a group worthy of our collective gratitude Thank you, parents, and congratulations to you, too. Sitting here with you are not just Northeastern University graduates, but the best possible return on your investments of unconditional love and support. You are right to be so proud. Now, class of 2010, it's up to you to make sure your parents receive the dividends for many years to come. And as a parent, let me say I hope that includes at the very least a phone call now and then. Text messages are not enough. I want to begin today, not 35 years ago when I lived in Boston, but 112 years ago, 1898. As a country, we were feeling pretty good. That was the year Theodore Roosevelt and the Rough Riders captured not only the high point of San Juan Hill, but the imagination of the American people. This nation was entering the world stage as a new power. But heroes, leaders, weren't just on the battlefield. I actually prefer the weapons that a small group of people used here in Boston. 
a few months later. October 3rd, 1898, to be exact. We started with an eraser and two sticks of chalk, said Frank Palmer Spear. And as many of you know, he was talking about those very first classes at the Boston YMCA that marked the start of this college, the college that the world now knows as Northeastern University. This nation and this center of higher learning have come a long, long way since then. Looking back reminds us that we are capable of great things. Looking around reminds us of the strength we draw from friends and family. Looking ahead reminds us there are many challenges to confront. Of course, when you start off in life or any great pursuit as you do today, you can't always know exactly what those challenges will be. That was true for my generation, for many of the people who fill these stands today, your parents. More importantly, it's true today for you now amidst economic uncertainty and in the aftermath of the greatest recession in our lifetime. But you must confront the challenges because you don't just leave Northeastern with memories. You leave with a mission. It's to take what you've learned here, and because this is Northeastern, it's to take what you experienced here and apply it. You have the opportunity to do that. But you also have an obligation. With the education and achievement this day recognizes you have an obligation to lead, an obligation to be leaders, and to help shape society and shape the future. Now, that might sound simple or profoundly difficult, maybe even surprising, coming from a CEO in the financial services industry. Now, you don't need a poll to know that very few people believe corporations always deliver on their social responsibilities. But the challenge that I describe should not be all that surprising. My generation, that of many of your parents, came of age at a time when even amidst vicious hatred Dr. King was reminding us that the battles for our God-given rights should be civil. We came of age at a time when women were hard at work washing away old stereotypes. We came of age when a book called Silent Spring led to a clarion call to protect our environment. In the wake of Watergate and the divisiveness of Vietnam, we came of age demanding institutions become more open and transparent. These events did not leave us unaffected. As individuals and as a generation, they defined us. And for some of us who went into the corporate world, that meant fundamentally rejecting the Milton Friedman argument that, quote, there is one and only one social responsibility of business and that is to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase its profits. Instead, some of us believed, and still do, that business exists because society allows us to exist. And in exchange for that permission to pursue profits, business must behave and act in ways that protect and enhance the world we live in. In other words, a business exists to serve its customers and the communities in which it operates. You can't just look at the bottom line. There is an impact on society that goes far beyond the products or jobs it creates. 
the notion of businesses needing to be involved is only increasing. More and more people don't just accept this, they expect it. The point of all these examples is this. My generation believed very much in our country's lofty ideals. We knew they were sound. But we also realized something else, that we had an obligation. And that obligation was to question whether or not we were living up to those ideals. Now, I'm not so naive to think that we've come far enough. We cannot deny the inequalities that still exist. We won't pretend that every corporation shares this perspective, or for that matter, that every shareholder wants them to. But I also believe that by asking questions and demanding not just answers but action, we helped solidify diversity and openness and stewardship as moral values. We saw our own country the way it was and the way we wanted it to be in a different light. And the result undeniably was change. Now, we haven't done enough. There's still much more to do. But the change has clearly been positive. This can be how you make your mark, too. Because class of 2010, you will shape society not just by continuing the unfinished legacy in America, but by doing that for the world. You will make the global community a better place. You will impart moral values like empowerment, opportunity, understanding, and mutual respect. What's more, you have a head start, and it is because of Northeastern. One student put it this way, people go here for a reason, to succeed in the real world. I would add, and to help the real world succeed. Why? It's not just because you're involved in the community or the global community. It's because you know of no other way. When President Ayun has said of urban universities is true of Northeastern around the world, being engaged in the community is not something they do, it is who they are. Being a global citizen is not something you seek, it is who you already are. Nothing says this more than Northeastern's commitment to experiential learning and its global experiential learning programs. You know, when most colleges boast about their global presence, they say we're on almost every continent, not Northeastern. It's only fitting that as of a few weeks ago, there is now a Husky in the shape of a biochemistry student occupying Antarctica. But that's just one of so many examples. I asked this graduating class to look around. Look who is sitting next to you. Maybe it's one of the graduates who went to Nepal to treat sick children. Maybe it's the classmate who traveled into the heart of the Ecuadorian Amazon to study pollution. Maybe it's the person who helps persecuted Iraqi refugees resettle in the United States. Maybe it's someone who worked for a major international company in a world capital, or someone who worked for an NGO in a remote village. Or maybe, just maybe, it's your classmate who works as a production assistant for the Red Sox at Fenway Park. OK, I know that's not really global, but I thought it was cool. In fact, I understand, according to a vote, it's the coolest experiential learning opportunity in the 100 years of Northeastern's co-op history. So when it comes to experiential learning, all of these examples and the opportunity to pursue them make Northeastern the envy of the world. And what they make you is ready. So I can tell you that before you leave campus, 
to stop by El Hall and rub the nose of the husky statue for good luck one last time. And you might as well. Every little bit helps, particularly in a tough economic environment like this one. The challenges in finding a good job in these times are very real. But I firmly believe that in time, employers will see your experience. They will appreciate your commitment. And they will know you're a good hire. They'll know you're a good hire not because of luck, but because you are so well prepared to succeed. Earlier, I mentioned Teddy Roosevelt. And as many of you may know, he won the Nobel Peace Prize not for fighting in a war, but ending one. He actually delivered his Nobel lecture 100 years ago this very week. And in that speech, he outlined a doctrine some called peace with action. What is experiential learning if not education with action? And what is education with action if not what sets Northeastern and each and every one of you apart? Northeastern University, class of 2010, your education and your actions tell me that you are ready. Ready to fulfill the obligation to be leaders. Ready to meet the challenge of shaping society. And ready to change the world. Congratulations. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you.